Hello, this is Lex Berman, and I'll introduce you to using R in QGIS very quickly. Um, the first thing I want to mention is that you'll need to install Saga. And if you just look for Saga GIS download, you should be able to find it here on SourceForge. And you can go ahead and download this package. Once you get the package, then let's say it's in your downloads and you have the Saga package here. You unzip the Saga package and once you have it unzipped, you go ahead and move it to somewhere where you're going to want to keep it. I just put mine over under program files and I moved it right here. So it should be ready to go at that point. You don't need to install anything after that. It's, it's an executable right here, uh, if you get the Windows version, that is. So once you have the Saga in place, you're going to have to do a little bit of checking in your QGIS application to make sure the paths are set correctly. And once the paths are set correctly for Saga, then your R if you have R installed, that's the other thing you have to do is have R installed. Um, then R should be able to run with the Saga package correctly in place. So the way to check that is once you're in QGIS, you, um, you go to Options, and then you look under Providers. And here's where you'll find things by default. And you'll see that the Saga if you had problems with it, you could deactivate it and then reset the folders that it's appearing in. Like here, the Saga folder I had to set by browsing over to the correct location and plugging it in like this and hitting Select Folder. So once that was set, uh, I hit OK and it was set to go. Then the same thing is true for R and for uh, other scripts you might run. I have R already installed and it's appropriately placed. Anyway, that should get your environment ready to go. Now in terms of uh, testing this, I would recommend this great R for Spatial workshop that was taught by Tina Cormier at fos for g Boston and it's all available on GitHub. And I went in and uh, looked in the package for the location where the data is right here. And you can just simply download that data to your hard drive and then unzip it. And in my case, uh, once I had it unzipped, I just created a folder where I'm going to keep it called rtemp. So I wanted to keep that as a, like a very simple path here. And there's the data that I downloaded. There's this eBird, which is what we're going to use. And so this basically is the data that we're going to use for the demo. Now, once I had that in, in there, the data ready to go, then uh, also I was taking a look at the data cleanup right here. So she has all these R scripts very nicely uh, commented, I should say. And you can read and learn everything about adding different packages and using the data that she set up. For example, here is very important. You can bring into this fast data table package and you set the working directory and you can see here working directory is set to this home directory, but we want to set it to that path that we just had set the directory and then you can bring in data right here it says read in the data from this working directory and then we will go ahead and do some other stuff with it for example the coordinates were in the wrong location so she switched them exchanged the positions of them in the data frame without touching the original data and then after that she did a bunch of things um, for example you know, fixing dates and so on and other things she did was to limit the query to remove a state that she didn't want to see in the data. Oh, here it is. 
So this line here basically said take this data frame that was created called birds and then don't include any of the data frame that has the state province value equal to Ohio. So that just limited it to New England. So I basically created a shortcut version of all this and I'll show you how it runs now. I created a shortcut version by cutting and pasting into my own script. So here's the script. I can edit the script and you'll see the whole thing again. So I pulled in the, the data table library. I created this working directory that we just established over here, this rtemp directory, see? And that's right here, setting the, the data directory. I pulled in the data, it's in that directory, and then I switched the lat long positions in that data frame that we've created. I trimmed off Ohio, and then finally I just wanted to say, look, um, write this all this out to a CSV file. And this is all using Kina's code, but I just wanted to show you how I simplified it into doing a few steps. So here's, I'm going to go ahead and run this algorithm, hit run, and it's basically crunching through 126,000 rows and it created this file called fixed birds in the folder right here, fixed birds. So I just created that in my script and uh, now I'm going to add it as delimited text, browse, fixed birds, open. It's not comma delimited, it's space delimited, so I can tell that because it, the preview is correct. Longitude, latitude, x, y. So longitude, yes, latitude, yes, that's correct now, hit OK. And now it should load all these records and as you can see it did eliminate Ohio so now it's actually in a CSV file and I can do stuff with it it's kind of cool um, for example let's go ahead and we've gone from R back to Q just now and we can open our attribute table and uh, shrink that down so you can see it so here's our attribute table um, 126,000 sightings and if we look through here we can see we have like eastern bluebird, rock pigeon, and so on and and I know there's one called uh, where is it? Uh, great blue heron. So let's just say I want to know where the great blue heron the most frequent place that you'd find a great blue heron out of all these data, right? So how do I do that? Well one thing I could do is in the attribute table itself I can simply uh, do an expression which is right here. And I could say, well, for the field that is called the common name, set that equal to, and then grab the values here, set that equal to the great blue heron, and then select. So I've run that selection, and now I have 42,000 out of the 126,000 selected. So now I can simply take those and I could save it. I could save only the selected features and I can create my own file for example called you know blue heron and I'll save it as a shape file now so I can do other operations on it more easily. Say OK. So now I have a separate file. There's blue heron and there's everything. Now there is a great deal of overlap but now we have a separate file for Blue Heron, and what we can do is we could create, for example, a heat map right away, and we could just call it Blue Heron, uh, okay, save. It's going to be a GeoTIFF, and I could make it, this says uh, 20,000 layer units, which are meters, but I mean, I would say, let's just make it, say, 8,000. It's going to be a little finer res. And I'll say OK, and now here's the heat map. And we can start to see some differentiation, but let's give it some color. So in the style tab, I can create a single band pseudo color. And 
and I can say, well, let's really boost that up and see pinks. And let's, um, instead of continuous, let's go ahead and make those, say, quantiles. Uh, well, equal intervals, whatever. And uh, what I want to do with these classes, I'll go ahead and, and show you that first. So there it is. And I can already see some differentiation. But what if I just basically took the zero value and I said, you know what, make that 0% opaque. In other words, just make it invisible. In fact, make the next category down, make that invisible 0. And then slowly start to give us some opacity here, like starting with, say, 40% opacity. And then this one, say, 50% opacity. And then finally make this one like a really bright pink, hot pink, say. And make that like 80% opacity. So now I basically have knocked off the lower part of this whole spectrum of color. And now I've really got just the highlights. In fact, I could change these colors to kind of make them more uh, variety. Say, apply. That's orange, and then I could make this one say yellow. Okay. Apply. And now I've got, I can really see where the pink is. Those are the hot spots for the blue heron. So here's this map, and now I can really see that there is particular range where the blue heron exists. If I want to see a base map, I can add, for example, the Google Physical, which is available by default now, and put it below my data that I want to see. I can zoom in a little bit, and I can see that, in fact, this uh, Blue Heron range is not so much in Worcester, but it is around here. It is on the north shore of Cape Ann and so on in certain places on the Cape. And uh, I've, I've turned a whole bunch of heterogeneous point data into uh, one species heat map, having generated the original stats from R. So I just wanted to give you this you know, quick how to use R in QGIS. I hope it's useful. Yeah, bye.